Mark again here, Weather Channel Live. This is your Weather Channel content for Sunday, August 23rd. And I do have the track from uh, Marco and the track so far from uh, our thunderstorms for Laura. And I'm going to show you this as soon as we get done with Weather Channel and they give you the update. God bless you all today, everybody involved. God bless you. I do hope that you are okay through this. But please get serious because there is going to be some power outages in the least out of all these storms. Good morning and welcome to AMHQ Weekend. Thanks for joining us on this busy morning. I'm meteorologist Reynolds Wool. I'm meteorologist Kelly Cass. What a difference 24 hours make, that's for sure. Yesterday we are talking about two storms in the Gulf of Mexico at virtually the same time. And yeah. now, of course, they're expected to become hurricanes, both Marco and Laura. So this is going to be a one-two punch for the state of Louisiana. As for now, tropical storms Marco and Laura are threatening to make rare back-to-back -back landfalls. Oh, you're right about that, Kelly. Hurricane watches and warnings are up right now as tropical Tropical Storm Marco makes its way through the Gulf of Mexico. Marco expected to become a hurricane later today. Will affect parts of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and the state of Texas. While Laura still has a ways to go, making its way across the Dominican and Cuba, Dominican Republic and Cuba, before lash after lashing Puerto Rico. All right, the headlines on Laura and Marco and what we know right now. Nearly 1,100 miles of U.S. coastline are in the paths of both storms. The governor of Louisiana and mayor of New Orleans have declared emergencies. Amtrak is canceling service to and from New Orleans due to the tropical cyclones. And Laura has left some 200,000 homes and businesses without electricity in Puerto Rico. My gosh, yeah, it's just, just staggering to watch this all come together. All right, folks, um, wow, you know, it's funny, the Gulf of Mexico is a place that's relatively quiet for much of the year, and then all of a sudden you have this eruption. What we're seeing now is an eruption. Its name is Marco, and you see the changes we've had over the last several hours. Certainly, if you go back 24 hours ago, we had winds of 45, 50 miles an hour, now we're up to 70, and we expect further intensification. It has got a lot in front of it in terms of very warm water, of an environment for, for it to, to, to strengthen. The current movement is north-northwest of 13. You see the location, 185 miles northwest of the western tip of Cuba. Where's it going? You take a look, and if this uh, does validate, we expect it on Monday morning with winds of 75, that's a category one Monday evening more of the same not a great deal of intensification but <clears throat> still some very strong winds of 75 and a Tuesday into Tuesday afternoon into the evening hours notice these winds begin to drop a bit more one thing I want you to keep in mind which we're going to show you in mere moments is that it's not just the line that you follow or the potential something else to consider is how wide these things happen to be so you've got just a plethora of moisture that's going to come on through and again we're going to show you in places like say Florida and Alabama you can still have some heavy rainfall even though it's a it's far away from where exactly this thing may directly come on true at least in terms of the eye you see the watches and warnings scattered across the map roll forward in time this is what I'm talking Talking about. Okay, so the bulk of this, keep an eye on this movement, the potential movement here, but also look at these waves that begin to pop up. Any of these capable of producing things like water spouts, some heavy rainfall, damaging wind, tornadic activity, it can't be ruled out. It really can't. And we go into, say, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and we still have these slugs of moisture. Look at that. The eruption over parts of South Alabama into Georgia, and of course in Louisiana, Mississippi, again, pumbles its way on through. And then we could, as we roll forward, see some of this make its way over to parts of Texas. Very quickly, let's say this very, very briefly. Euro model shows the bulk of the moisture moving around Lake Pontchartrain, New Orleans, possibly as much as 8 inches of rainfall. USGFS shows the bulk of the moisture just a little bit more towards the east. Got to watch this very quickly if we see these models begin to merge and uh, come to a quick agreement. All right, Kelly, back over to you. Well, New Orleans, clearly a target for both Marco on Monday and then Laura after that. We've got a lock through our Earth Cam. The city will lift parking restrictions today and is urging drivers to move their cars to higher ground. New Orleans is coming off its wettest July on record with more than 15 inches of rain. Flooding on saturated soils looks unavoidable. We'll have to see how the levee system is able to keep up with some of the rainfall rates that tropical systems can deliver. I mean, one tropical system is bad enough, and that would be Marco first. And then, of course, behind that, we've got Laura that's expected to move on in as well. And today really is your prep day. You still have some time to prepare for both of these tropical systems, but not a lot of time. We're going to start to see some of the outer rain bands from Marco work its way in. We see some thunderstorm activity just off the coast of Mississippi and Alabama and around the Plaquemines Parish area as well. We're seeing a little bit of lightning activity. So as we go through the day today, we're going to watch for the showers and the thunderstorms. It's a very humid environment. Then we get into some of the heavier and steadier 
heavier rain as we go through our Monday. So here we go, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, Monday morning, and the city of New Orleans looking at some pretty heavy downpours here, down toward the coast and over towards southern Mississippi as well. Here comes the center of the storm. So you'll notice the more intense rainfall starting to show up on our future radar. This is at 5 o'clock tomorrow. So we really don't have a whole lot of time to prepare for Marco. There will be some strong winds on the eastern side of that. You've got the possibility of storm surge flooding. And remember, we do have hurricane warnings now posted for parts of the Louisiana coastline. There's a look at the rainfall, by the way. We're talking three to as much as five inches, maybe more, across the southern tip of Louisiana here. But right in the city of New Orleans, kind of right on that line, we could see three, four inches of rain. We just don't want it all at once, especially given the fact that we're already saturated from a very wet July. Mobile, same deal. We're going to be on the eastern side of Marco, so we'll watch uh, periodic showers and thunderstorms moving through today, and then it's really going to be Monday when Marco moves in, and you'll start to see the heavier, steadier rain setting up, and with the steadier rain, there will be the gustier winds. And remember, Marco is expected to be a hurricane. Category 1 on the Saffir-Simpson scale, so power outages will be a possibility, never mind the flooding that's also going to be happening between tonight and tomorrow morning, and then a bigger area of the Gulf Coast is under that flash flood threat as we go tomorrow into Tuesday morning, Reynolds. Kel, you were so right, and what we see on Mexico shores could be coming to our own. Marco whipping up big surf on Mexico's Yucatan beaches. The storm did thread the needle between Mexico and Cuba yesterday. It stayed over the 125-mile-wide Yucatan Channel and never made landfall. Western Cuba was expecting as much as five inches of rain out of Marco, with even more today than that on the way from Laura. This is a case where somebody is just going to get whiplash watching one system after another and seeing the impacts that are going to unfold. Right now, what we're dealing with out in the, the Gulf, well, with winds picking up, these are some of the buoy reports the time being. You've got gusts around 25, but those are also going to accelerate. You see the story this morning, calm conditions in New Orleans. Not going to last. Look at this. Sunday, by the time you get into the afternoon, gusts up to 18 miles an hour. Right along places like Canal Street, we have those tall buildings. The wind is going to really accelerate in spots like that. So hold on to your hatch there because the worst is yet to come. We're going to Monday. We see those winds approaching 30, possibly stronger, up to 30 to 40. Biloxi, Pensacola, Jackson all being affected. But eventually, wind won't be the big story. The big story is going to be the moisture that comes with it. Yeah, some, that could be a tremendous issue. But back on the winds, though, in terms of the arrival times, on Sunday we begin to see them ramp up. On Monday, look at that. Around 8 o'clock in the morning, tropical storm force winds. You, know, you really can't see wind, but you can sure see the stuff that it moves around. White caps on Lake Pontchartrain, possibly the white caps on the Mississippi River. Absolutely, both could happen, and we'll definitely see that manifest itself as we roll forward. Right now, water's rising up. You'll notice in Dauphin Island and a pilot station east to south of Venice. And sure enough, for the time being, we've got these alerts for you. The storm surge watch, storm surge warnings, and it won't be limited just to the coast itself, but pockets inland on a lot of the you'll see the swelling waters coming up and it will be affecting so many communities, possibly the tune of two to four feet from Bayou Battery over to Orange Beach in Alabama, four to six from Biloxi to Grand Isle, and then notice from Lafayette to Lake Charles, two to four. Now we may see some fluctuations, some changes in the forecast over the next several hours, so all this bears watching. And this is almost a situation where it's not even forecasting, it's play-by-play -play because that's how we're going to see this roll on. We'll get the energy and the wave height forecast, some of these topping 20 to 30 feet possibly along the shoreline. Well, both Marco and Laura are likely to generate a life threatening storm surge along the coast. Now, what does that mean? It means you could be swallowed up by a giant wall of water. Our hurricane expert, Dr. Rick Nab, has the story. A land falling hurricane brings with it a powerful surge of salt water that can travel over land for miles into neighborhoods like this one and up rivers and streams tens of miles inland with devastating consequences. At three feet high above ground, water is already life threatening and floods the lower levels of homes and businesses. Large objects can float, including cars and trucks. Driving is impossible. When water reaches six feet, vehicles quickly get carried away. Sharp, dangerous objects and chemicals can lurk below in the murky water. This is truly life-threatening and above the height of most people. And when water gets up to nine feet, the first floor of homes and structures are completely flooded. There are very few places to survive when the water gets this high. This is why storm surge accounts for about half of all deaths directly caused by tropical cyclones in the United States. So please find out if you live in an evacuation zone today and be prepared to leave when ordered to do so because evacuating is the only way to ensure you survive 
a rising storm surge. All right, after Marco, we've got Laura to deal with. Right now, Laura pulling away from Puerto Rico this morning. It dumped as much as a half foot of rain on the island and is also caused gusty winds as high as 67 miles per hour. Several small landslides have been reported. And remember, it was just a few weeks ago that the system that became Isaias soaked parts of Puerto Rico with as much as a foot of rainfall, taking care of the drought, but unfortunately too much of a good thing can lead to flooding. All right, let's talk about Tropical Storm Laura, which really hasn't done any strengthening, and here's why. It's over land right now. Uh, the center of our circulation is about 95 miles to the east of Port-au-Prince in Haiti, and you can see all the convection just still affecting us across the public. Things are beginning to improve for us, though, across Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. Of course, yesterday they were getting the gusty winds and heavy rain. So what's interesting with the path of Laura, and we're going to talk with the National Hurricane Center director in just a moment, but it is going to move pretty much over land. At least the center is going to kind of stay over the Dominican Republic, move across Haiti and into Cuba as we head into Monday. So notice the winds don't go down, but they don't go up either. But then once it gets past Cuba, what kind of system will it be in terms of intensity? We do know that there's plenty of warm water ahead of it here in the Gulf of Mexico. So it does have the chance that once it goes past the Keys with winds of 50 miles an hour Tuesday, that right here in the middle of the Gulf, we're going to see it rapidly intensify into a hurricane, 85 mile per hour winds Wednesday morning, perhaps even as high as 100 miles per hour as it approaches the Louisiana coastline Wednesday night into Thursday morning. So here's a look at the advisories for now. We do have the tropical storm warnings that do remain in effect for Hispaniola, Cuba, Turks and Caicos, Bahama Islands, some of them, all the way through the Keys, are under tropical storm watches right now and could get upgraded as, of course, Laura moves west. So here's what we do know about Laura right now impacting Cuba later today after it moves past Hispaniola. And depending on the land interaction with the system, um, you know, we'll see what kind of system it turns out to be once it reemerges into the Gulf of Mexico. But impacts on the U.S. mainland will begin tomorrow. And right now it is forecast to strengthen into a hurricane. There you go, guys. So that's the that's the official weather report from NOAA and on Weather Channel reporting. So thank you, Weather Channel. We appreciate y'all. Now, this is your severe storm, so you can expect what's going to be coming from these two hurricanes when they come in. So you can kind of get an idea. Uh, this is subject to change, especially after right here, because this is 9 p.m. on the 23rd. Anything after that is really going to change. Uh, it could change just a little, it could change a lot, but it is going to change. But it looks like everything is still headed for New Orleans as far as all the heavy winds and the heavy rains. Uh, pockets do get up in, in uh, Georgia, uh, of course Florida, with the severe weather. So be aware of these rain bands. And then when Laura moves in, it's going to whip some rain bands across as well while Louisiana is getting flooded from Marco. So as Laura's on her way, as far as we can see right now, it's right there, and you can see highly circulation, very strong points on the tips. There's a lot of convection going on, and these bands are going to expand all the way out and hit all the way across the coast right there. So let me play this for you so you can see as this comes with the storm so you can get the timing as well as the impacts to when this comes. And me, myself, I like the as well as a lot of y'all. I like to praise Jesus as much as I can. Exodus 15. At that time, Moses and the sons of Israel proceeded to sing this song to Jehovah and to say the following. Now, this won't be sung like a song because I can't sing. So I apologize for not reading this correctly as it's meant to be read. Let me sing to Jehovah, for he has become highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has pitched into the sea. My strength and my might is Yah, since he serves for my salvation. This is my God, and I shall laud him, my father's God, and I shall raise him on high. Jehovah is a manly person of war. Jehovah is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his military forces he has cast into the sea and the choice of his warriors have been sunk in the red sea the surging waters proceeded to cover them down they went into the depths like a stone your right hand O jehovah has proven itself powerful in ability your right hand O jehovah can shatter an enemy 
And in the abundance of your superiority, you can throw down those who rise up against you. You send out your burning anger. It eats them up like stubble. And by a breath from your nostrils, waters were heaped up. They stood, they stood still like a, a, like a dam of floods. The searching waters were, were congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I shall pursue, I shall overtake, I shall divide spoil. My soul will be filled with them. I shall draw my sword, my hand will drive them away. You blew with your breath, the sea covered them. They sank like lead in majestic waters. Who among the gods is like you, O Jehovah? Who is like you, proving yourself mighty in holiness? The one to be feared with songs of praise. The one doing marvels. You stretched out your right hand. The earth proceeded to swallow them up. You and your loving kindness have led the people whom you have recovered. You and your strength will certainly conduct them to your holy abiding place. Peoples must hear. They will be agitated. Birth pangs must take on the hold inhabitants of the Philistia. At that time, the sheiks of Edom was, was indeed be disturbed. As for the, the despos of Moab, trembling will take hold of them. All the inhabitants of Canaan will indeed be disheartened. Fright and dread will fall upon them. Because of the greatness of your army will be with motionless like a stone. Until your people pass by, O Jehovah, until the people whom you have produced pass by. You will bring them and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance, an established place that you have made ready for you to inhibit, O Jehovah. A sanctuary, O Jehovah, that your hands have established. Jehovah will rule as king to time indefinite, even forever. When Pharaoh's horses with, with his war chariots and his calvary, calvarymen went into the sea, then Jehovah brought back the waters of the sea upon them. While the sons of the Israel walked on dry land through the midst of the sea. Amen. Well, God bless all of you today. I hope everything comes out okay. And I will update this as it comes out. Uh, I'll do a video later this afternoon so you'll see what's going on into tonight. Uh, I will be live streaming on this channel first before I go to my channel. So I hope you all have a blessed day today.